triangle area formulas were at 10.3b. We're up to eight previous videos for chapter 10 that are in the description if you need them. In this chapter, we've used A equals half BH to find the area of a triangle, and we've used trigonometric ratios to find missing lengths in right triangles. We can combine these two techniques to find the area of a triangle when we don't know the value of H, the height. So I need to let you know right now, if you've missed the lessons on trig ratios from 8.2a, 8.2b, and 8.2c, you need to watch them first or you might become confused. They're in the description. If we're given the lengths of two sides and the included angle, we can use this information to find the area of the triangle. So here we have a length that we're going to say is a, a length that we're going to say is this b, the lowercase notice, and we're going to use it to find the area of this triangle with saying that we know what the angle of C is, okay? So that's going to be the sine of C. Remember, Sokotoa, so that's going to be the OH opposite over hypotenuse. So what we can do is multiply both sides by this A denominator, and that one cancels that one, and we're left with A sine of C is equal to H. Now we substitute the expression for h, this a sine of c, right here, into the area formula. So instead of b and h here, we have b a sine of c. So the area is going to equal half b times a sine of c. Trigonometry is the basis for making calculations about triangles, and the sine, cosine, and tangent functions are the tools for describing them, which enables us to make accurate calculations. And we can use this method to find the area of this triangle. So we're given two sides and an included angle. So remember, the included angle is between those two sides. We have the sine of B, which is 25 degrees, is equal to 7 over 8. We multiply both sides by the 8, that cancels these out. We have 8 sine of 25 is equal to 7. We're going to use area equals half base height and put this in. So we've got half times 7 times 8 sine of 25 degrees. We substitute the measures of the side lengths and the included angle. That means we have half times 56 times the sine of 25 degrees which is 28 times the sine of 25 degrees. And we put that into our scientific calculator and we get that it's approximately 11.8 inches squared. We can use this triangle. We've got two sides and an included angle. So the sine of T would be 10 over 9.6. 10 over 9.6. And the sine of T would be 45 degrees. We have sine of 45 degrees is equal to 10 over 9.6. We multiply both sides by 9.6 and we get 9.6 times the sine of 45 degrees equals 10. We put this into our area formula of half base height and we get half times 10 times 9.6 times the sine of 45 degrees. That's half times 96, which is 48 sine of 45 degrees. We can calculate using trig values, trig table values, and we end up with approximately 33.9 centimeters squared. We'll round it to the nearest tenth place, so we just drop it off after the nine. So we were able to find the area with two sides and the included angle. And there's another way. We can also find the area of a triangle if we only know the lengths of the sides. We can use Heron of Alexandria's formula, known as Heron's formula. So the area is going to equal the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. And this S is one half of the perimeter of the triangle and the ABC are the side lengths. So now what we do is we find out what S is for the triangle. And remember, it's half the perimeter. So we're going to add the 8 
plus 9 plus 13.5 and get 30.5. We need half of that for S, which is a 15.25. We put it into the formula. That means we have 15.25 times 15.25 minus 8 times 15.25 minus 9 times 15.25 minus 13.5. We do our subtraction first, and 15.25 minus 8 is 7.25, minus 9 is 6.25, and minus 13.5 is 1.75. I multiplied 7.25 times 6.25 times 1.75, and I got this nice long decimal number. Then I multiplied it by 15.25, and I got 1209.2, and the decimal went on, so I rounded it to 0.2 at the tenths place. I need to find the square root of this. Using my trusty calculator, I find out it's 34.77, and then it went on longer. We want to round it to the nearest tenth, so I only needed that 7, and we've got approximately 34.8 inches squared. So we found the area of the triangle using Heron's formula, just knowing the side lengths. So that's it for lesson 10.3. Now we're going to move on to 10.4 and talk about perimeter and area in the coordinate plane. We're going to follow that with effects of changing dimensions proportionally in 10.5. Then we're going to move on to probability and geometric probability in 10.6. So now you know there's more than one way to find the area of a triangle. I hope you're having a great day, and I hope I'll see you for our next lesson. Bye.